An honorary doctorate recognizes individuals of outstanding accomplishments in scholarship, creativity, public service, education, or contributions to human welfare. Today, we will be presenting Sanjay Merotra, President and CEO of Micron Technology, with an honorary doctorate. Born in Kanpur, India, Sanjay's father was passionate about getting his son the best engineering education possible. To do that, he needed a visa to study in the United States. The embassy turned down his request three times, but his father was persistent. Sanjay, now an American citizen, often cites this as a lesson in the power of tenacity. Upon reaching the U.S., Sanjay attended UC Berkeley, where he earned his bachelor's and master's degree in electrical engineering and computer science by the age of 21, an education that opened doors into the dynamic semiconductor industry. Over his 40-year career, Sanjay has served as a corporate executive and a company founder. He holds more than 70 patents, has earned numerous industry awards, and in 2019, he served as the chairman of the Semiconductor Industry Association. In the past two years, he has been inducted into the Semiconductor Industry Association Hall of Fame and elected to the National Academy of Engineering. He has been leading Micron since 2017. His leadership style shows his passion for inclusive culture, continuous learning, and community outreach. He is leading Micron during an exciting period for the company, where changes in computing architecture are opening new opportunities for memory and storage technologies to transform everyday life. Micron has been a steady partner to Boise State for decades, helping to found the College of Engineering nearly 25 years ago and continuing to support students through world-class facilities, as well as making significant investments in doctoral programs that benefit industry and the state of Idaho. Boise State's College of Engineering is now Idaho's largest and top-ranked engineering college. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Sanjay Mehrotra. Congratulations, class of 22. You did it. Let's give you one more big round of applause. I'm thrilled to be part of your celebration today. And thank you, Dr. Trump, for that wonderful, kind introduction. Dr. Trump, I want to sincerely thank you for your partnership over the years. Boise State, you have one of a kind leader in Dr. Trump. I meet with many leaders across the globe, and I can tell you that Dr. Trump's inspirational energy and vision is truly something special. You are very fortunate to have her. And thank you to all of you, graduates, faculty, family, and friends, for including me as part of this wonderful morning. 
Wonderful, no matter what the weather holds for us, it's looking beautiful at this time. And I'm deeply honored to receive this honorary degree. Now I can say that I'm a fellow Bronco too. And what a great looking graduating class. It is fantastic to see you all here together on the blue. I'm told that this is the largest class of graduates in Boise State history. And you know what that means. You know what that means. It means you are also the largest graduating university class in Idaho history. The diploma you're receiving today can be transformational. It certainly was for me. Education is the foundation for a great career and so central to a rewarding and exciting life. You, the class of 22, are particularly special. Not only have you achieved this impressive milestone, you have overcome so many obstacles than usual to get here. I want to commend each of you. Your college career was split in two by a global pandemic. Nobody had a roadmap for how to finish your degree during a time like this, but you did it. So for my first point of advice to you, one, perhaps, that you have embodied more than any generation before you. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. My college years hold a special place in my heart. I loved studying at UC Berkeley. It was absolutely transformative for me, but it was one of the most challenging times in my life. I arrived at the university as a transfer student from India. I grew up in a middle-class home in the city of Kanpur in India. We had no television at our home. The airplane that my parents put me on the, to come to the United States was the first ever flight of my life. You can imagine the culture shock. Everything was foreign to me. The equipment in our labs, the classroom sizes, layout of the buildings, and of course, coming from India, the American accent also took some time to get used to. I was studying electrical engineering and computer science. At the time, I was taking a class from a professor who was a Nobel Prize winner in physics. And the students all around me all seemed very bright and intelligent. I was a good student, but I can tell you that I was quite intimidated. I remember writing to my dad. Back then, we wrote letters back and forth. You probably text your parents all the time now. I wrote my, to my dad back then and told him I was worried. I thought I might not make it through that class. But the combination of culture shock and rigorous learning really channeled me into focusing on working hard and learning as much as I could. It was challenging in the beginning, but ultimately, I did pass that course. I learned to use the new equipment. I learned to understand accents. And I learned to navigate my atmosphere. Later in my life, my dad would often remind me about that letter. He reminded me about those feelings of self-doubt, feeling that I wasn't sure I could do it. He would bring it up as an example to remind me that many times things can appear very daunting in life, but life has amazing ways of showing you that you are capable of overcoming. Some of you may have had similar feelings. Maybe you are, you are from a small town or somewhere far away or the first in your family to go to college. Today, you can feel the pride that comes from achievement. I hope you will always remember the dedication and resiliency that brought you to this moment. Remember the obstacles you had to overcome and cherish your degree. But also know 
that your time at college has prepared you for life in more ways than you realize today. Use this great achievement as a starting point for all that you will do. Let it give you the confidence to step out boldly and take on challenges without fear. And that brings me to point number two. Take smart risks. Take smart risks. Early in my career, I joined two colleagues, Eli Harari and Jack Yuan, all three of us immigrants, to found a startup based on a lab technology called Flash Memory. It was a risk. We all had good careers, but we also had a vision, a vision that this lab technology could be much, much more, could become much bigger. We started the company SanDisk in 1988 when cameras used rolls of films. Music was on cassette. Smartphones and selfies were definitely not a thing. We saw Flash as something that could be used in computers, copiers, and eventually digital cameras. We had no idea how big it would become. Today, the flash storage and memory that Micron develops play a vital role in almost every aspect of life. I want to take a moment here to say how proud I am to lead the Micron team. The research and development that drives memory technology forward today is being done right here in Boise, just a few miles away from the stadium. It is absolutely world-class innovation, and it is important work too. Memory is in everything from automotive systems to data centers, drones, medical devices, computers, cameras, smartphones, and even industrial robots and factory lines. In 1988, Flash was just a lab technology. Today, it will almost certainly store every photo and video that you capture to celebrate this big moment. And it will help you to share those photos with family and friends thousands of miles away. And now, if you will indulge me, I want a selfie with all of you. We could never have imagined the full pot potential of flash technology, but we had a vision and the determination to see it through. If you are willing to dare to dream and to pursue that dream without fear, sometimes the dream becomes more than you ever imagined. Our early days as a startup were not easy. We were creating something totally new and it took some time to be widely accepted. There was a lot of hard work and grit required. At one point, Kodak approached us with an offer. The name Kodak probably means not much to you, but it means a lot more to your parents. Kodak was a big company at the time, and they asked us, the startup, to be an exclusive supplier for them. Wow, as a startup, this is the kind of deal that you dream of. A committed customer and a big contract you would have to be crazy to say no. We said no. It was a difficult choice. Sticking to your dreams will always bring you to a difficult choice. For us, it was a choice between comfortable success and the hard work and uncertainty of continuing to go on our own. But by turning down Kodak's offer, we had the freedom to push ourselves and take our company much farther than what we thought we could do with Kodak. So always choose your dreams over being comfortable. As you go out into the world, I want to stress the importance of deliberately choosing to foster a culture that includes others. As I mentioned before, my first years in college were an absolute culture shock. But I was able to thrive because I felt included there. This might, not seem like a, this might not seem like a surprise to you. Berkeley is known to be a very diverse campus today, but it was not so in 1976. I was very much a minority there. 
but I was welcomed openly. My fellow students and professors made a point to include me, and that made all the difference in my academic career. I'm sure I would not be who I am today without their encouragement to bring me into the Berkeley College life. Eventually, I, a middle-class kid from northern India, was riding a skateboard to class and cheering on Bears football with as much heart as anyone. I know you can't imagine me riding a skateboard, but I sure did and really enjoyed it. I still have that skateboard with me. And I still cheer the Bears, even though they have not given me much reason for celebration in recent years. <laughs> and I would never have been able to make the cultural leap without intentional support from the people around me. There are voices in our culture that set themselves against inclusion. They are missing the point. Inclusion is not a subtractive force. It is additive. Inclusion creates more ideas and better ideas because you are hearing everyone's voice. One of the things I love about Micron's team is seeing the tremendous power of their diversity. It is what fuels our technical invention and creativity. You can go to our Boise campus and meet men and women from 65 different countries. And I can tell you that there is sincere, genuine care among the team for each other. That kind of caring is somewhat unique in the tech world. It is different. But I know you know what I mean because that care has its roots in this city. This place, it is the Boisean way. So do not forget it when you leave here. Take it with you. Embrace people who look different than you. Embrace people who think differently than you. Embrace people who grew up differently than you did. And Dr. Trump has set a great example of how to do this. And she is an example of strong woman leadership. And I know that Bronco culture reflects that generous heart. As you go out into the world, take that heart with you. Bring that welcoming attitude with you. Do not be afraid. You will be amazed at the positive waves that you can create simply by being a welcoming voice in a world that is too often so quick to judge and exclude. Class of 22, our world needs you. We need your passion and determination. We need your energy. We need your heart. We need your creativity. Graduates, look around you. Your families and professors are here today supporting you. You may not embark on any more formal education after today, but I promise you that you will continue to learn throughout your life. The university has provided you with some excellent teachers during your time here. From this point forward, you will have to find teachers yourself. Continually seek out mentors who can help you on your path. Stay curious, be bold, seek out challenges that will stretch you. Use all that this great university has provided you to go out and change the world. You will do amazing things. I'm sure of it. Thank you, and go Broncos!